Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Thought provoking, informative, engaging. Are you ready to be inspired and equipped? And now, the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Welcome to the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. I am Mark Spence, and sitting over where I normally sit is Eddie the Legend Roman. Woo. Today, Ray, we have a very sensitive subject to talk about. It is world vision and the bit of fiasco that has taken place over this past right. week, from Monday to Wednesday to now. Everybody's just kind of left with what in the world is going on with world vision. Fiasco is the right word. I mean, what were they thinking? Thinking. What were and, they thinking? And who made this decision? It, it must have been a corporate decision. They don't do something like this. And it was crazy because they're going to get shot at from both sides. So they are being shot at from both sides. The yeah. world's going to go blam, and Christians are going to shoot in the side because uh, their decision was crazy. You know, somebody provocatively said that they should change the name of their ministry from World Vision to The World's Vision. Right. And well, but not so fast. It seems like there's been a retraction. It seems like some things have taken place before, uh, within the last couple of days. And before we get into all of that, we want to show you a trailer for Noah. Now you went and saw Russell Crowe's. I didn't Darren see Russell Crowe's. He wasn't there, no, but I he saw wasn't Russell Crowe's. No, no, but um, <clears throat> you don't know what happened, did you? I have no idea. No, I know that yeah. Noah's hitting the, the big screen and you decided you well, don't Well, I found out that, that, that it didn't hit today, it hit last night in some theaters. So I went to one theater and uh, printed my ticket out. I, I reluctantly paid out my $13, because yeah. I know it's gonna go into the, into the pockets of those same people that produced The Wolf of Wall Street, the blasphemous yeah. movie. Yeah. So I, I, I reluctantly gave my, I paid it over line. It said Theater 16, and you know, had blocks, the different theaters. So I went in, <clears throat> there was nobody in the theater. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it was just me for about 20 minutes. And Easy had told me to go early because of the crowds. So I went early. So I sat through about a hundred trailers. You know how they keep having trailers, right. trailers, trailers. And they were and terrible. They were terrible trailers. And then finally, this couple come walking, and I says, "Hey, hey, good to see you here." So, and then a girl came, and we sat down, and then the movie started. What time is the showing? No, hang on. It's the wrong movie. I was in the wrong theater. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you see? Nobody is surprised with you. Comfort the feeble-minded. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought. That's not Noah. I knew it wasn't Noah because it was all modern stuff on this new movie. So uh, uh, it had number 16. It, well, they had changed it to number two. There was number 16 on my tag, so it wasn't as dumb as what I thought I was. Um, but <laughs> there was, it was seated 500, and there was about 20 people in the theatre, but it was a pre-release. Um, what a stupid movie. It was just... <laughs> Seriously, for $125 million, I thought the, the motion graphics would be impressive. They, they weren't. For now, all the animals were animated. They sure looked it. I mean, oh, the, they did? Yeah, uh, to me it looked like sometimes you go to Disneyland, there's a bird that's sort of like that. It was, wasn't <laughs> like that, but it, was, but, but it was pretty close. I mean, I'm, I'm used to seeing some of Dale's work and what he yeah. shows me, and I thought, that much money, it could have been better. The rock people, they had a rock group. The, 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 you, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? You can't really say anything, can you? Anyway, it was just crazy. <laughs> oh, Noah has these rocks, these rock people, hundreds of them, help him build the ark. They're, they're just these, they're, they're rocks with faces and arms and legs, and they talk and they walk. And I thought, he's been watching too many cartoons on a Saturday morning with the yeah. kids. Because that was like an insult to the intellect. And then Nara, uh, Noah's character, he was just so twisted, mi misrepresentation of, uh, of the Bible. So, um, yeah, it, it really Did they is. portray him as a gladiator like they did in that movie, Gladiator? It, it, was, it was almost like that. He, um, he at one point, he get this knife and he's going to kill his two grandchildren. Oh, yeah. Because he felt that's what God would have him to do. And... And it really is a, a, a sick movie, and uh, it was a. I'd rather watch uh, artificial grass grow. It was <laughs> kind of huh. boring. Yeah. So yeah. So now, do you recommend other people to go see it for the same reasons that you did, or do you you went and watched it because people are asking you questions? Yeah, about I, I, it? I I had to I have to do reviews on it for yeah. television and, right. and radio. So uh, someone's going to say, "Have you seen it?" For me to say, "No, nope, it's yep. kind of dumb." So uh, I, I I'm glad I saw it. Uh, it really is. Uh, it's disappointing as a movie for that much money if you go for the, just the, uh, the graphics, et cetera, et cetera, but the story is just so unbiblical, it's not funny. So the story's unbiblical. So you're saying that somebody wanting to go enjoy the movie with no biblical foundation whatsoever, love Russell Crowe, Anthony Hopkins, 
they're not going to be into it either, anyways. Um, well, it, it, if I can give an analogy, it's like producing a movie uh, called Napoleon, and you paint Napoleon as a very tall Japanese guy that likes skydiving. <laughs> That's how far Noah is from the biblical Noah. He's a righteous man yeah. in Scripture who loved God, loved people, and he's portrayed as this kind of psychopathic, drunken maniac running around trying to kill his grandchildren. So I think he had a flashback for Gladiator when he had that knife in his hand. Yeah. That's what happened. So if they're not going to see that, Noah, what should they watch? Oh, there's another one around. Isn't Noah the movie com. I cannot believe the response we're getting. It is just so wonderful. We got a, an email from a guy in India who said he came to a place of repentance yeah. uh, uh, through watching it, and so many people are being so moved. It kind of shocks us because we're so close to it. You keep seeing scene after scene after scene. You have, how many times have you watched Noah? Yeah. Hundreds, yeah. hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds, so you, you lose the power of it, but it's just so wonderful to think God is using it. Last time I checked, less than three days, 152,000 views. That's better than 180. 165,000 right before I came down. Oh, really? 165,000? Twice, doubled yesterday. Yeah, that is just wonderful. So thank you very much. Keep pushing it. And yes. uh, Stephen Baldwin just tweeted it. Oh, he did? Yeah, which he says there's a lot of controversy about huh? the Noah movie. Watch this one. Oh, wow. And I, God bless him. I met him yeah. about five or six months ago. Yeah. He does down in Hollywood doing something. And, and we had a good chat. And he's a very genuine, nice guy. And I'm so pleased he's done that. So yeah. knowthemovie.com. Pete. Uh, keep uh, sharing it, pushing it. We're very yeah. grateful. Thank and we you. have a trailer here that we want to show you again concerning our Noah, NoahTheMovie.com. Here it is. Noah. of the world, your future. 10 indisputable signs, undeniable evidence that we are living in the last days. The future is coming. NoahTheMovie.com The Bible, Noah? No, I do not believe he existed. So you don't think he built an ark? No, no, I'm very comfortable with my atheism, but I support myths. she said the Bible Noah it just says so much doesn't it it's yeah. not like any reverence for the Bible it's such a mocking tone yeah. the Bible Noah yeah you know when skeptics ask questions that's typically in their voice if it's not in their voice it's the motive behind the right. question that they ask mm. they're not interested there's none that seek after truth there's none that seek after God so we need to be gentle uh, hoping that God grants uh, repentance. Well, back to the topic at hand here, Ray. Uh, World Vision. World Vision is a humanitarian organization. For those of you that are not familiar with who they are and their premise, they really do an amazing work with the end product. That's true. They provide children with food, with humanitarian efforts, people who will never be able to raise the money on their own, so whether it be through medical or whatever may be, schooling, they provide an amazing uh, job out there. They're not just nationally here in the U.S., but they're internationally. There's headquarters all over the world. Well, they have made the news big time this week because this past Monday, their president came out and made a, a statement that put a lot of Christians on their back heels and said, what in the world? is going on. Basically, they came out and they said, listen, we are accepting of homosexual marriages, whether they're gay or lesbian, to work for our organization. Now, they did not come out and say that they are pro-homosexuality. They did not say that. But yet, there is a lot of Christian groups that are up in arms. Why? Why would they be so up in arms, and what has brought us to this place where we would even talk about it on the program today? They're saying that they have no problem hiring homosexuals to work and represent their ministry. 
And because they represent their ministry, Christians are coming along and saying, listen, there is a slippery slope coming along. You may not say that you are pro-homosexuality, but there's a slippery slope when you begin to include them within your employment. Two days pass, Wednesday comes along, and they said, we made a mistake. We ask for your forgiveness. Now, asking for forgiveness goes without saying. You've asked for forgiveness to Sue many times. For me, other people you come in contact with, that's the Christian way. Because mm -hmm. we are not perfect. We're not sinless. We will make mistakes. Sometimes we make mistakes in the public eye, like right. World Vision. Sometimes we make them privately. And we always go and ask for forgiveness. But forgiveness really is not the issue. Mm -hmm. Would there come a place where you would not forgive Sue for something that she's done? No. No. I'll answer for you. <laughs> right? You will always forgive. <laughs> what could she do? What could she do? There's that one thing. Uh, yeah. It goes without saying. My kids, if they come to me, my wife comes to me, people come to me, they say, I need your forgiveness. Well, listen, we forgave you before you even committed the offense. 70 times 7. 70 times 7. 490 times. No, that's not the issue. We will always, always, always forgive. But here is the problem, and I think Michael Brown, we're going to get into some of his points that he made that are very genuine on how you can regain the trust of the religious Christian world, that right-wing individual group. Um, before we do that, we want to throw over to Eddie and get Eddie's initial thoughts on world vision. Not the world's vision, as someone has once said, but Eddie, what is your initial thoughts when you think of world vision in totality? Well, I think the issue here has to do with uh, organization referring to itself as a Christian organization. That's the issue. So if you're an organization or a church or even a person who takes on the name of Christ, calling yourself a Christian, then you know, the question is, what does that mean? Does that just mean I'm a Christian because I'm nice and I feed children? Or does that mean as a Christian, I follow Christ? And if, you, if you're following Christ... Are you just following him in one little aspect of all that he has revealed to us and told us that he wants us to do? Or are you following Christ in everything? You've got to remember that the same God that told us to feed, to feed and take care of the orphans in James chapter 1, that's the same God that told us that homosexuality is sin in Romans chapter 1. In, in Psalm 82, we're told to um, defend the fatherless. Well, this is the same God that told us that homosexuality is an abomination in Leviticus 18. So the issue is consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're gonna call yourself a Christian, you need to be consistent. So I'm not, I'm not surprised at all that Christians who, who are backing this organization, they're gonna be shocked and, and wonder what's going on when, when they start doing things that are clearly anti-biblical. Another issue is, is just by saying that, you know, we're gonna hire people who are homosexual, it kind of brings in the whole thought of, you know, homosexual, homosexuality is an issue of, of like race. There's black people, there's Chinese right. people, there's homosexual people, and they're kind of using that really bad argument where they're lumping everyone together and causing Christians to think, huh, well maybe homosexuals aren't that bad. Well, every person is a, is a, is a sinner, we know that from the Bible, and regardless of whatever, whatever sin they're into, you know, we can definitely respect the person every homosexual is made in the image of God. And so, you know, every homosexual, every homosexual will be someone that God could forgive if they repent and put their faith in Jesus Christ. But that's not the issue. The issue is by making this like part of the employee thing, they're basically saying someone who practices this sin, we're okay. So my, we're okay with them. So my question would be, okay, are you going to put into your employee, you know, guidelines there, if you are a thief, we're going to hire you. If you are someone who is an adulterer, we're going to hire you. Why stop there with the sin, and that's exactly what it is, the sin of homosexuality, you know? And that's kind of the, that's the reason they're so, they've gotten so much flack from the Christian community. You know, um, <clears throat> the world hates hypocrisy. We're saying the church is full of hypocrites. Hypocrites don't like it. What do they want us to do? Play hypocrites and say, yeah, homosexuality is not a sin, or be genuine in our faith? Right. We, we're going to be genuine. We're going to say, God considers homosexuality a sin. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. We can't be a false witness and say, oh, mm. we give a pass to homosexuality. That would be playing the hypocrite. We want to be genuine in our faith. 
Hmm. Well, you guys, neither one of you gave me the opportunity to even play the devil's advocate towards you guys because you guys answered it. You know, somebody comes along and says, what's wrong with working side by side with a homosexual who wants to feed the poor? Are you that homophobic that you can't go hand in hand with them and feed the poor? You can't provide for those in need. Well, that's not the issue. And we have no problem working side by side with homosexuals for different humanitarian efforts. But the issue is the statement of faith here. World Vision claims to be a Christian underlining foundational organization. Mm -hmm. right. They herald Christ crucified. That is the point of their ministry. And because of that, we have an issue with that. And when you're going to redefine marriage, where do you stop? Because you're going to redefine all kinds of things, just as Eddie said. So we are not homophobic. I'm not afraid of homosexuals. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, uh, the leaders here at World Vision are homophobic uh, with what they said. But they mention here that they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. My question is, what is the mistake that you made? It's unclear. We're still left scratching our head, and here's why. I want to go through a couple of the points that Michael Brown had mentioned inside of uh, his newsletter here. Can we trust World Vision? Who can trust them? What are their true colors? Somebody mentioned on your blog or on your Facebook page, Ray, says when a wolf takes off his mask and there's a wolf there, just because they tell you they're a wolf does not now mean everything's okay. Right. They will still have those wolf-like tendencies. What is going to be the response? And let me bring out a couple of these points here. Uh, and this is what Michael Brown, in reference to the president, he said, listen, in your interview on Monday with reference to homosexual marriage, you challenged the idea that scripture is very clear on this issue in reference to homosexuals. We say, hey, homosexuality is a sin. You challenged that, and you said, well, Ask all the theologians and denominations that disagree with that statement. In other words, it's not as clear as mm. we may think mm. that it is because there's theologians and denominations that disagree that homosexuality is a sin. And then in contrast to your statement on Wednesday of repentance, your letter, you said this, World Vision U.S. stands firmly on the biblical view of marriage. Well, so which is it? Now, all of a sudden, it is clear to you, well then why did you make that initial statement that there are theologians and denominations that disagree uh, with that initial uh, stance? Mm -hmm. Many of us are genuinely confused, Michael Brown continues. He says, are you now saying that although some churches may differ on this, we are now reaffirming our strong belief that in God's sight marriage is the union of one man and one woman, while homosexual practice is always against the law of God even in the context of monogamous homosexual unions. On Monday, did you feel that the biblical definition of marriage was debatable? But on Wednesday, you decided that this was not the case? If so, what was produced in order for you to form such a drastic change within a couple of days? Your clarification here will help us to instill greater confidence. Well, I, I think a lot of people protested and withdrew the support, which is tragic for the children that are being supported. I mean, we're, yeah. we've, we've been, Sue and I have been with World Vision for years, yes. many years. We immediately withdrew and went to Gospel for Asia. And that, that broke our hearts because yeah. there's kids that we've been supporting for years. But uh, I think that's what made them turn about. There's very real lives. Now, we don't know. That, that, that seems to be where I stand as well, mm -hmm. that all these protests, because if nobody protested, yeah. guess what? It's business as usual. We Absolutely. made the decision. We're moving forward. You know, I was a little disheartened that I went on World Vision's Facebook page, Ray, mm -hmm. and I said, I simply said this, disappointed in the direction you are now heading, I see this as a topic of discussion on our show, The Comfort Zone. So many people were liking what I had to say. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, that brought the attention of someone there. They reported that to Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook sends me a message and saying, you do that again, you are banned from Facebook. <laughs> do what again? I can't state my opinion. Yeah, rebel. I have an opinion. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rebel. It's not like it's a, uh, a cause of concern for me. I'm looking for a way to get rid of these different social media outlets that just kind of suck the <laughs> life out of you. So uh, I've, I've maxed out with my 5,000 friends, and I have like 600 people, friends, waiting to come into the queue, and I'm looking to delete people. So when somebody brings that up, listen, we do have a voice just as you have a voice, and for people to be able to spark their voice, 
they shouldn't be deemed as inappropriate behavior to do so. Right. Rather surprised, rather surprised. Uh, Eddie, at any time you, you feel you want to chime in here, feel free to do so. Okay, I'll do it right now. Go for it. You know, it. there's so much uh, that can be said about this issue, issue. One of the things I see with World Vision is they have erred on the side of love. And so a lot of times you'll, you'll hear people, they're really either focused on love or they're, they're focused on truth, right? So, so someone who might be focused on truth only without the love, they might be the kind of person that might hold up a sign that says, you know, God hates homosexuals or something, something like that, you know, which is, which is crazy, but it just shows this is a person who all they care about in their mind is truth and they have no love whatsoever. They have no concern about the homosexuals themselves. All they care about, right, is the fact that someone who continues in homosexuality, homosexu they are on their way to hell, but they don't really care about the fact that, that they can repent, put their faith in Jesus Christ, and be saved from that, right? So on the one hand, you have the kind of preacher, the kind of even Christian, who is so, con co so concerned with, with what they see as truth that they have no grace. On the other hand, you have the kind of Christian, the kind of ministry, that is so concerned with love, helping people, you know, being nice to people, that they really stray away from any kind of truth, any kind of confrontation, any kind of thing that would make people see them as, this guy, this guy doesn't exactly like me, he doesn't agree with me, that, that kind of thing. And so I could see a ministry, you know, just being so focused on love that they, 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 care, they forget about the truth and they might reason it out saying, you know what, as long as we have the money, as long as we have the support of the homosexual community, all we care about is feeding this ki these kids, we're going to err on the side of love. Now the problem with that is, is that there needs to be a balance. Okay, in John chapter 1 it describes Jesus Christ as being full of grace and truth. In Ephesians chapter 4, it's, it says that we need to be speaking the truth in love. So there always has to be a balance of grace with truth. And any time you err on one side, get rid of one or the other, you're going you're, you're gonna to be messed up in some way or another. And, and so as Christians, whether we're feeding the poor, you know, my, my church has a ministry to the homeless. But within that homeless ministry, every time they give someone food, that homeless person, they're going to get a gospel tract. They're going to be explained. The yeah. gospel is going to be explained to them. Our church has mission, missionaries that go out, even down to Mexico, and they, they build houses. They, they feed people. They do all kinds of stuff. But they're always given the gospel as well as they do this, full of grace yeah. and truth. You, you can't get rid of one or the whole thing is going to fall apart. That, that's yeah. so true. Um, love is the, is the spring of truth. Yeah. Um, we've got these care packages for homeless people we have in our car, yes. and they always have the gospel in them. Someone broke into Seuss' car and stole one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's funny. We, can't, we keep no. those as well. I mean, yeah. we're, we're rich in good works. That yeah. we're, we're commanded to do so, but we delight in doing so. Let me bring up another point here that Michael Brown had mentioned here. He said, do you now recognize that your policy change was in fact an act of compromise and did indeed represent a serious slide down a slippery slope? In your interview you said, we're not on some slippery slope. This is not us compromising. If you repudiate your earlier comments, would you be willing to state that clearly now for us? Were you on a slippery slope? Were you compromising? What was the mistake? Once again, this whole show is how do you regain the trust? Well, listen to the people. That's why you brought out that uh, on Wednesday, the change. We made a mistake. So what are you going to do about it by just simply bringing forth a statement? Third, since official organizational policies are of great importance, is anything stopping you from writing the biblical definition of marriage into your bylaws? Committing to hold to that standard regardless of societal change and regardless of financial implications. The latter and the offhand chance that standing on scripture will ultimately cost you financially. And since you speak of the shifting views of some churches on the subject, will you commit in writing to honoring God's word even if the majority of churches associated with you apostatize from biblical standards? Boy, that's great. That is a very good observation there, Mr. Brown. When you Brown. say Michael Brown, um, the name Brown sounds familiar. Is this Dr. Michael Brown? I don't know if he's a doctor. I would say yes, I, he yes, is. I think he is a doctor. A, I was just giving a thumbs up. Jewish? Yeah, he's a friend of mine, I oh, think, Michael. Look at that. I think we've but met him. Th this is good. Sh should you put this inside your bylaws? I think yeah. you should. Yeah. 
if you're if you're really going to take that stance and are you willing to take the financial blunt even if things get tough within society talk about opening a can of worms that's what they've done yeah uh, you know, before I bring up this, this last point here that uh, Michael Brown brings out, it reminds me of Al Mohler. Mm. He is hired by a Southwestern Seminary, comes on in, and he cleans house. He got rid of all the liberal left-wing ideologies, these views that have kind of creeped into the yes. church, on into the seminary, and there was this huge uprising. Mm. Southwestern Baptists, you know, uh, they're huge within not just the United States but the world. They're the biggest Protestant denomination, mm. Christian organization in the world. Right. So let's hire Al Mohler to clean some house, and that's what happened. Some have said this, Ray. Mm. Tell me if you agree. Is it possible that there needs to be a cleaning of the house? Who brought this to the forefront? Oh. What board agreed yes. with this? Do we need to head that direction? Is it possible they, need, they may need to head that Heads direction? Heads need a roll from the top. Is that repentance? It's not just a change in the mind, but it's it changes fruit of, actions. It's fruit of repentance. This, uh, whoever made that decision uh, made it without reference, without fear of God, without reference to God's Word. That person should not hold that position. Yeah. You know, they even commented, hey, we should have brought peer review into this. Yeah. Superior review is what we like to call it. We're running out of time. Lastly, number four, will you require all of your senior leader leadership to affirm the biblical definition of marriage? And since the voice of conservative evangelicals within World Vision was ignored or overruled as the policy announcement was being made, are you taking steps to win back the hearts of those who were ultimately offended? So it would do you wise World Vision to have all of those on your board, inside leadership, to say we affirm to the biblical definition of marriage between a man and a woman. This is how you're going to regain the trust of the American people and people internationally at large. I think that Michael Brown hit it out of the park and we echo his sentiments. Now contact Facebook and say that you're in the wrong for deleting me <laughs> off of your Facebook page, World Vision. And I can once again, now let's offer you some where do you go from here? If you want to head another direction, you can. If you want to stay, that's up to you. You know, Gospel for Asia, gfa.org, offers a really good um, direction where you can head to, to support your money. Inside, you can right now, down below, in the description page here on YouTube, we will list a whole series of... I guess organizations that you can support. A list of organizations. Yeah, whole, yeah, from Promised Child to Ends of the Earth Ministries to Saving Grace World Missions to Far Reaching Ministries. There are a lot out there. Go down in the description. They're worth looking into. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for Thanks, tuning into the Comfort Zone. You can look us up on Facebook, on Twitter. You can go, there's so many different directions. YouTube is where you want to go. We have 80 some thousand people subscribed. You want to as well. For questions about the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort, or to submit questions for future shows, please email us at email at tczlive.com. That's email at tczlive.com. The Comfort Zone is an outreach of living waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel. Looking for that perfect gift? Give the gift of laughter with Ray Comfort's 101 Things Husbands Do to Annoy Their Wives. Open air. I don't know. What is response? I look at this. Please don't leave me. It has some side effects such as nausea, vomiting, loss of hearing, loss of sight, loss of bank account, irreplaceable heart artery syndrome, as well as irreparable damage to feet, elbows, brain, and toenails. Consult your physician if you really think you need to, but if you don't, we won't hold that against you, and you can still purchase this product. No questions asked. 101 Things Husbands Do to Annoy Their Wives is a lighthearted look at married life, sure to bring laughter to any couple. One hundred and one things husbands do to annoy their wives. As with all of Ray Comfort's books, a gospel message is included, explaining the message of everlasting life. It's the perfect gift. That's 101 Things Husbands Do to Annoy Their Wives. Get your copy today at livingwaters.com.